announcing the announcement of news, Laren Studios have shared that during the Guerrilla Collective Showcase, which now takes place from June 13th to June 15th, they will be unveiling some news. The Collective will feature announcements, trailers, gameplay, and more from developers and publishers. Laren released a teaser trailer alongside a tweet announcing the news, which shows some in-game action and screenshots. As for what news, we are still awaiting the release date for Baldur's Gate 3, which so far has been announced to be launching on PC and Google Stadia. Previously, V Developer has shared the title has not been planned for the current console generation due to it not being able to run the game as is with the engine they are using. Baldur's Gate 3 will release on PC and Google Stadia. It will be released on Steam Early Access by the end of this year. In a blog post, Mojang has outlined two new DLC packs being released for Minecraft Dungeons. The first being Jungle Awakens, which will launch in July. This will add a new area to explore in a treacherous jungle, with new dangers to encounter and three new missions. Jungle Awakens also comes with new weapons, armor artifacts, not to mention some deadly enemies such as Leap Leaf, Jungle Zombie, Poison Corvine, and more. Later this year, the second DLC will be released called Creeping Winter. So far, no release date has been announced, but Mojang will be announcing it closer to the time. But one of the major pieces of news is that the developer is now working on bringing cross-platform to Minecraft Dungeons, and Mojang will be announcing more about this in the coming weeks. Minecraft Dungeons is available on PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Game Pass, and PC. Sony Interactive Entertainment has now postponed the PlayStation 5 reveal event, which was supposed to take place earlier this week. They put out a statement sharing that they do not feel that right now is the time for celebration. For now, we want to stand back and allow more important voices to be heard. A new date has not been arranged as of yet for the event. The virtual event on Thursday was to showcase PlayStation 5 games in an hour-long presentation ahead of the next gen's release in the holidays of 2020. Sony isn't the only publisher or developer in the gaming industry to postpone their events. CD Projekt Red behind upcoming Cyberpunk 2077 also pushed their Night City Wildlife stream to June 25th. The PC Gaming Show 2020 and the Future Game Show also followed suit, pushing their events to June 13th. The Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America have awarded The Outer Worlds with a Nebula Award for game writing. The news was announced over last weekend. The award, which has in the past gone to novels and short stories, has also expanded to films as well as TV scripts. This also includes game writing, which is great news for sci-fi games out there. Obsidian, the developers behind The Outer Worlds, beat out the competition, which included the quirky detective RPG Disco Elysium, which was also nominated, as well as the Magician's Workshop and Fate Accessibility Toolkit. The Outer Worlds arrived on Nintendo Switch this week. It is also currently available to play on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Grinding Gear Games, the developer and publisher of Path of Exile, announced a new expansion called Harvest for PC and consoles this week. The new update will contain new gameplay mechanics, the Harvest Challenge League, and will bring changes and revamps to many areas of existing Path of Exile content. The expansion introduces the Sacred Grove, a place where players can plant seeds to grow them and harvest them. Rare seeds can enable special boss encounters, yielding rare rewards. To get a rundown of all the additions and balance changes for the expansion, be sure to watch our Path of Exile Harvest expansion overview. Path of Exile Harvest will release on June 19th for PC and on consoles the week of June 22nd. Pokemon Sword and Shield The Isle of Armor will be releasing on June 17th, adding a number of new places to explore and new Pokemon, or rather old and new, to catch. A new trailer featuring the upcoming expansions, which are included in the expansion pass, was released. The next DLC, The Crown Tundra, will be releasing later this year in fall. It also showed a number of new legendary Pokemon, Gigantamax forms, and Galarian forms. Along with new Pokemon comes some new features. Cramomatic, which allows players to recycle four items to combine them into a new item. These can include Pokeballs, PowerPoint Ups, and much more, including a chance to create rare items. Pokemon Sword and Shield The Isle of Armor expansion releases on June 17th, and The Crown Tundra releases in fall of 2020. Next week comes a number of announcements which includes the release date for the Celtic mythology-inspired RPG The Waylanders. During the IGN Summer Gaming Showcase, developer Gato Studios will be announcing the release date for The Waylanders. There are also new details about animal companions for the game, a ship that acts as a base, and the possibility to romance Nazhajur, an NPC. Animal companions will come in a number of different forms, who will help slay monsters as well as being your fuzzy sidekick. 
If you're after a furry companion to assist you in battle, you will want to choose Ranger as your class, as this comes with a total of 12 different animals to choose from. Pets also level as you do, gaining unique abilities that deal damage, distract, heal and inflict enemies with status effect. Those who choose magic as their inclination will also get pets that they can summon to their side called invocations. A number of classes can summon spectral creatures who will assist you in battle for a short period of time, so unlike ranger pets, their time is fleeting. The Waylanders will be releasing on Steam Early Access this summer and its release date will be announced next week. The Microsoft Store has apparently leaked a listing for a Kingdoms of Amula remaster called Kingdoms of Amula Re-Reckoning, which was found by a Twitter user Walking Cat via Reset Error. The game is listed to be releasing on August 18th, 2020. It is a remaster of the 2012 action RPG published by Electronic Arts and developed by 38 Studios. THQ Nordic had bought the rights to it a few years back. According to the official description, it had the minds of Ari Salvador, known as the author of Dritz de Orden series, and the comic artist Todd McFarlane, known for Spawn, and lead designer Ken Ralston, who worked on The Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. The title sets to bring stunning visuals and refined gameplay in this remaster. The title will also include all the downloadable content from the original release. Both the official Kingdoms of Amula and THQ Nordic Twitter accounts have confirmed the remaster. Listings for further platforms have also turned up on Amazon. Kingdoms of Amula Re-Reckoning will be releasing on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. Banner of the Maid developed by Azure Flame Studio is coming to consoles this year. The title was first launched on PC in China in May 2019 then on Steam for the West in February of 2020. It follows an alternative telling of events during the French Revolution, complete with fantasy elements. It's described as a turn-based strategy RPG with deep and challenging gameplay, but also offers an in-depth story with some colourful characters. Players will command their own troops in the revolution with changing environments and more than 30 different terrains to battle on. Banner of the Maid will release on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Switch in 2020. Well that's it for the week in the wikis, please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community. Keep checking in with us with news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids, and general wiki goodness.